Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flare Mouse, and I want to bring you along to the testing of a new concept involving chalk. Now, the concept's rather simple. We're just filling the rear cavity of a Diablo slug with this chalk line powder. And as we're filling this thing up, we tamp it down a little bit, just kind of pack it in there lightly. Now, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this where it doesn't make so much of a mess but it seemed like no matter how careful I was it still just kind of got all over the place but anyway you get the idea I'm trying to fill this thing up as much as I can and just pack it in there tight enough so that it doesn't just fall out when I'm handling it you know even if I turn it upside down it stays inside the slug we're not sure at this point what these are gonna do will the powder just all fall out the back the moment it's shot Will it leave a dust trail or will it just stay inside the slug all the way to the target? Well, there's only one way to find out. We're going to start out at 30. 30 yards, okay. See what happens. Yeah, well, first of all, well, is that chalk going to cause it to be inaccurate? Ah. And he's just using little, t we've got a little yeah, Tony. A lot of people have been asking little about Tony. little Tony, yeah. He's been in retirement for a while. Time to bring him in back. In honor now. of the great Tony in Tennessee. There you go. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what happened in that millisecond. Now this slug was fired at a subsonic speed of around 1,050 feet per second. Immediately after it's released from the Sabo, we can see that it's leaving a very distinctive cloud of dust behind. This was just barely perceivable in real time. Now this slug had a mix of orange and black chalk line powder. I wasn't really sure what would show up best on camera, so I wanted to try a few different colors. Again, this was shot at 30 yards or around 27 meters. The slug impacted the Kevlar body armor pretty much where Danny was aiming. Now we wanted to capture the slug and just see if there's any clues we could find about what actually happened during the firing cycle. The slug itself was just slightly mushroomed. According to my low data, that's a barrel pressure of around 8,000 PSI. That of course is packing the powder even tighter into the cavity. And the majority of the powder is still inside the slug. Fourteen fifty-nine on that one. At a much higher velocity of over 1,400 feet per second, the slug is really having a lot of trouble stabilizing itself. It's all over the place, and you can understand why it was inaccurate in this shot. It's more likely this was caused by just a poor Sabo separation. With a barrel pressure of around 12,000 PSI in this shot, the powder really packed in there. We didn't really lose any along the way. All right, that was little Tony. Well, let's try it through some full rifling and see if maybe we can get a dust cloud. Now this is a really interesting shot. The slug is wobbling all over the place despite being shot through rifling. We see a little puff and then the slug just kind of smooths out and starts flying straight. Now I blamed the instability of the smoothbore shot at the same velocity on poor Sabo separation. But I'm starting to believe that we were just pushing these way too fast. And the puff we see is the moment the slug goes subsonic. Slugs do lose about 10% of their velocity every 10 yards after all. Now let's see how these slugs perform at 50 yards. Uh, you got a headshot on that one. That's where my point of aim was. Okay. At 1,266 feet per second, that's about the limit for these particular slugs, it seems. That's around the velocity of a 22 bullet. When these slugs impact a steel plate like this, it leaves a big old noticeable dust cloud and a big stain on the plate. Overall, the accuracy was pretty good, especially considering we packed them full of chalk. In case you're wondering how big that area of the target is, it's only four and three eighths of an inch wide. That is pretty good shooting. Now, a lot of channels would probably 
just not show you this piece of footage, but occasionally Danny does miss, but not by very much. But let's give him one more try with the rifled barrel. There you go. Now with all things considered, this is pretty good shooting with a 12 gauge. Sure, you're not going to get super rifle-like accuracy with a 12 gauge, even with a rifled barrel, but this is still quite good. The slugs did pretty well through full rifling, so how about through a smooth bore without any kind of optics on it, just a bead sight? Uh, 50 yards. 50 yards. Can you do it? Only one way to find out. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Now for some reason, which I don't quite understand yet, we saw the trailing of the dust cloud behind the slug more often with the smoothbore than we did with the full rifled barrel. Now the overall accuracy, considering he was just using a bead sight, wasn't bad at all. Just managed to clip the side of the target. And trust me that that bead sight does completely cover up that target. And once again, we see that distinctive cloud of dust behind the slug. And once again, very impressive shooting by Danny. And I'll be first to admit, I cannot shoot that well. And this just proves that Danny is human. After all, we had him shoot 10 of these things in a row. and. You tend to get a little fatigued after that. But overall, tests like these are subjective, and there's a lot of factors that can cause slight inaccuracy like that. Interesting concept, and uh, again, I didn't know what they would do. I thought all of them would leave a, a dust trail. Only a couple of them did, which was kind of cool. I think better off, you know, if you're gonna try to get the dust trail, keep the slugs at a subsonic speed. And all the same weight. Yeah, these were all different weights, but I didn't even mention that. Yeah, some of them were uh, like seven eighths of an ounce, some were at one and a quarter ounce. I mean, they were all over the place. But it was just what I had, and it's like, let's try this. This sounds like an interesting idea. Perform well at 50 yards. Yeah, Danny performed well at 50 yards. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.